Welcome everyone to another episode in the Perspective Drawing series. In this one we are going to take a look at some methods for constructing some complex forms in perspective. So this video is going to follow on from the previous one where we had constructed some complex forms by bringing together some basic forms, these being cubes, cylinders, cones and spheres. Now whilst I will continue to do that throughout many of the examples moving forward, I do want to show you another method and this involves taking a flat projection of an object and then transferring it into perspective before adding some volume. Again this is another method that I had learned in Scott Robertson's How to Draw book. So here I'm going to start by drawing out a 4x1 grid and I am going to divide this up and draw in a curved shape. I'm just keeping this example very simple for now. So I have this curved shape that has been drawn within this grid and you can use the grid lines as reference, seeing where it crosses those lines. That's why I also divided the grid up further, of course it's entirely optional but the more lines you have as reference, the easier the shape will be to draw in perspective, which is what I will do now. So here I have the flat projection in the top corner and I'm going to start constructing my 4x1 grid in perspective. Once I have one unit drawn out, which is a square in perspective, I can then duplicate this three times using the technique that we had covered in a previous episode. I have my 4x1 grid drawn out and I divide this up further so that it is the same as the flat projection. Now I can use that as reference and draw in my curved shape within this grid in perspective. So let's run through that again but this time I'll draw it on a different angle. So here I have two flat curved shapes constructed in perspective and now I will extrude these outwards to create a three dimensional form. This flat view is the side plane and so I start to construct a ground plane at a width that I am happy with. I can then project the grid lines across and start to build a box in perspective. I can divide up the other side of this box the same way and then draw in the curved shape. Now I have two of the same curved shapes directly opposite and I can join these up, here the grid lines continue to assist me. Now let's do the same with the second example here, again I add a ground plane at a width that I am happy with and then I start to construct the rest of this box, establishing the other side plane. I project the grid lines across and divide up the grid on the other side plane the same way. I then draw in the curved shape again and I can then join these up like so. I now have two three dimensional forms in perspective. Now in this example this curved shape was a side plane for the forms I was drawing but now I am going to use them as a central plane. So here I will do the same again and start by drawing this curved shape out in perspective and I will create two examples again. So now I have two of these planes drawn out and as I said a moment ago, these will be the central planes for some more forms this time. 
So I will start by drawing in a ground plane here and I'm going to do my best to make this the same width as a unit of the grid. I am simply duplicating the same grid on another axis. Here you can see how I use the duplication technique to help me divide this up and I can now draw in the same curved shape. Next I'm going to do the same again but on the opposite side and so I duplicate the width of the last grid that I had drawn across and start to divide this up as well. Now I also draw in that curved form on this side. So again I will do the same with the other example so that you can see this from a different angle. So now I have two of these drawn out, each has three planes, the central plane that I had drawn on a vertical axis and the two on the horizontal axis. You could always add another down below as well if you want to and then you will have a complete rounded form but for this example I will keep them like this. So now the next step is to start joining these planes up and the grid will help me do this. I'm now going to create some cross planes at each point where the curved shape crosses the grid lines at each section. It can be quite challenging to look past the construction lines and draw these in, but you can see here how I managed to draw one of these in at each section. Now finally I am going to finish this off by drawing in some arcs at each of these cross planes. These will join up each section and create a curved form. So again here I do the same with the other example, I add some cross planes at each point where the curved line crosses the grid lines and this is on a different angle so in some cases these cross planes cover each other, I just had to keep track of where I was drawing them. And then I draw in the arcs within the cross planes so that they also cross each point where the curved shape crosses the grid lines as well. So now we have these two drawn out and there is a real sense of form due to the arcs which wrap around them. I will now finish this off by adding what Scott Robertson refers to as the silhouette line and this conveys the overall form of the object. It's the line that defines the outermost shape of the volume. So now I am going to give another example of this method and construct another form. So starting with a flat projection again, here I draw out a 2x5 grid and divide this up. Then I draw in a flat view of the shape that I will be transferring into perspective. You might have guessed already by looking at this that I'm going to be drawing a rocket. So I have that flat view there in the corner again to use as reference and I am going to draw this out in perspective. As always I start with the horizon line and I construct this grid, except I start to do this on a tilted angle. I have covered inclines in a previous episode and here the top and bottom edge of this grid will converge to a point on that horizon line, whilst the other sides would eventually converge to a point on a vertical horizon line far off the page. In fact there is hardly any convergence at all so I just keep these lines parallel as I draw this. So I divide this up like so and I then draw in the shape of the rocket.
So now I am going to duplicate another one of these grids across on the same axis here and I will draw out another shape on the opposite side. These grid lines assist me as I do this. I'm able to look at the shape and see the points at which it crosses those grid lines. This can then be used as reference when I draw it in perspective. Okay, so now it's time to start drawing the plane on another axis, and I know that this will be perpendicular to what I have already drawn here. I have to eyeball the width of this and divide it up the same way. It might not be 100% accurate as a result, but it's fine for a drawing. So I divide that up and draw in the shape for the rocket again. At this point, there are a lot of construction lines, and so I do my best to see past them. I suppose the benefit to working digitally is that you can add or remove layers and also reduce the opacity, but here I do my best to draw these out by hand. Now for this example, I'm also going to add the next and final plane below, and this can easily be done by duplicating the width of the other grid downwards. Again, you know how this works by now, I divide this up and draw in the shape. So now I am at the point where I need to add those cross planes and for the time being I am going to forget about the fins of the rocket and just focus on the main volume. I find the point at which each shape crosses the point at each division on the grid and I construct some cross planes in perspective. Now that I have these planes drawn out, I divide them up and draw in some ellipses. Again, because the grid that I had started with was equally squared, we are working with equal squares between each planes, so I am able to draw an ellipse within this main volume. So finally, I join all of this together and I'll go over those fins for the rocket. I don't think I will render this one because it means working over all of this construction, which is the most important part and focus of this video. But regardless, I hope you found this method useful. I will likely show some more examples of it in the future. In fact, I will be uploading a tutorial on Patreon, which involves this method as well. That concludes this video. If you enjoyed this one, then please leave a like. I publish new videos each and every week, so if you want to stay up to date, then be sure to subscribe. If you enjoy the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage, and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you soon.